Tonight on CTV News, it's the worst assault a Christchurch detective has seen in his career. We have the latest on the investigation into the death of a 15-month-old baby boy. Another cold snap causes chaos on the roads and a blessing for the Christchurch Town Hall. Broadcasting across Canterbury, from the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening. Christchurch police say the 15-month-old baby who died last Friday was the victim of an extremely violent assault or assaults and was subsequently died of his injuries. Police have named the boy late this afternoon. Detective Inspector Greg Merton told media today that police received the post-mortem results and it is apparent that the baby suffered multiple blunt force injuries including a number of fractured bones and other non-accidental injuries. Uh, he says the scene examination and post-mortem results have confirmed that the little boy was in fact the victim of, a, an, of an extremely violent assaults or assaults, this is his words, and subsequently died of those injuries. Now Detective Inspector Greg Merton says uh, the assault is the worst he's seen in his entire police career. Uh, this is an update of the police inquiry into the death of the 15-month-old toddler in Christchurch on the 4th of July 2015. I can confirm that the name of the victim is Ihaka Paora Braxton Stokes. We've now received the post-mortem results and it's apparent that he has suffered from multiple blunt force injuries, including a number of fractured bones and other non-accidental injuries. The scene examination and post-mortem results have confirmed that Ihaka was the victim of an extremely violent assault or assaults and has subsequently died of his injuries. The homicide investigation into his death will continue and is making good progress. The scene examination is now complete and the property will be handed back to the family later today. And police say at this stage no arrests have been made. Well, black ice has been causing a headache for many commuters around the region with another cold snap making its way up Canterbury tonight. The freezing temperatures closed Dyers Pass Road near Governors Bay throughout the day, with residents living near Banks Peninsula urged to carry chains. However, the wintry blast didn't cause any major uh, hassles for motorists travelling over the ranges, as the passes did remain open. But tonight, the Christchurch Transport Operations Centre is urging motorists to drive to the conditions on the main Alpine passes tonight, with another dumping of snow expected. Up to 10 centimetres of snow will find its way on Lewis, Porters and Arthurs Pass. None, though, is expected for Linda's Pass, but those travelling through these areas are urged to carry chains and actually know how to use them. Uh, so there was a slight sprinkling of snow in central Christchurch, but will we see anything like the dumping last month? To other news now, the government has announced changes within Environment Canterbury. The Regional Council will move to a mixed governance organisation, seeing seven elected councillors as part of a three-year transitional period from next year until 2019. Here's Jared McCulloch. A shake-up for Environment Canterbury. Today the government announced plans to move the struggling regional council into a mixed governance body. Back in September 2009, the government stepped in after a joint letter from the regional mayors and districts raised concerns about ECAN's performance, with an independent review group set up to investigate the situation. Now the Environment Minister says a further three years are needed to get the organisation back in shape and running as a full council. The commissioners have done, in our view, an awesome job of getting into place both a natural resources plan uh, and a land and water plan uh, with a exercise that's going to take about a further three years with each of the sub-regions to complete that job. The council will be split into four different zones around the region with four councillors being elected from Christchurch and with one from all the other areas in North, South and Mid Canterbury. The review showed around 70% of consent sent to ECAN took far too long than legal maximum timeframes put in place and was noted as the worst performing council throughout New Zealand. One of the main concerns was around water quality, with Environment Canterbury performing ineffectively towards managing the region's supply. Water is just such a huge issue for Canterbury that half the water takes in New Zealand are uh, in this region, uh, that a third of the hydroelectricity generation is in this region, over half the storage of hydroelectricity is in this region, and this region has some of the most critical issues around uh, both nutrients uh, and in terms of water quality. Smith says the new mixed governance plan will help keep relationships with other councils and Naitahu strong, and will give time for ECAN to complete plans for the region's environmental future. 
while the transition back to a fully elected council is important, we want to see that water job complete. And so the intention in moving to a mixed model in 2016 and a fully elected council in 2019 uh, is to manage that transition. It is also the government's intention to retain the limited appeal rights on that water plan to ensure that they meet that deadline in 2019. And the Minister says it's a positive step to get Canterbury back on its feet. On the basis of the strong submissions that we received from the 10 councils across Canterbury, the Government has made the decision that the legislation will move to a fully elected council in 2019. And it's also consistent with the announcements the Prime Minister made last week about the role of CERA and effectively transitioning overall governance uh, in Canterbury uh, back to business as normal by 2019. Another review will take place in 2018 to see how the council was tracking before a full return likely the following year. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. The official blessing of the Christchurch Town Hall took place today with the restoration due to kick off next month. Chelsea Daniels was there this afternoon. The Town Hall site received its blessing this morning with construction for the restoration project set to begin this month. With the contract between the Christchurch City Council and Hawkins Construction now signed, the city should expect a fully restored town hall within the next three years. We've, we've worked very hard alongside the, alongside the council and, and the council team to, to ensure that that's a realistic time frame. Um, you know, sure, sure that um, that's going to be tested at times, but um, when we work together in a collaborative environment, we, we meet those challenges head on, as I say, and, and, and manage and understand those risks to not only um, you know, budget but also time frames. A total of $127.5 million has been budgeted for the project with $68.9 million funded by an insurance payout and the remainder through ratepayers' contributions. The Category 1 Heritage Building was originally opened in 1972 and has played a part in just about every Cantabrian's life. I look everyone I've spoken to, um, not so much in my circles, but um, everyone I've spoken to is, is, is really pleased that the Town Hall's been replaced um, or, or, be, or being uh, revamped. I mean, you know, we've, we've only got so many uh, historical buildings left in Christchurch and I think it's important that we, uh, we make an effort to save those that we can. The restoration work will include a reconfiguration of the James Hay Theatre, seeing to the needs of the growing performing arts community in Christchurch. Because the James Hay was originally designed to be a theatre, the makeover will ensure the venue is adaptable with retractable seating and making sure it has the right acoustics. The, prior to the earthquakes, the city really didn't have a space that provided um, sort of a mid-sized uh, symphonic venue and it didn't really have a flat floor venue for gigs and I think by repurposing the James Hay um, we're filling a gap in the market. He says that not only would the revamp of the theatre be vital in securing out-of-town acts, but provide a good learning arena for local groups. I think that will attract gigs from out of town, but also provides the opportunity for um, the local local groups, local local acts to to grow, um, come into a space like this, cut their teeth on on performances, you know, with a with a crowd of a thousand, and and grow on onto the world stage. So, you know, we've got some fantastic acts locally that if we can give them the opportunity, uh, it'll be great for the city. Peter says that they were focused on creating the right facilities for the people of Christchurch. What we, we looked at very closely is what does the city need and how what's the most cost effective way to provide it and when we when we looked at the the analysis the, the sensible solution was to retain the town hall it's got some wonderful spaces in it that arguably we couldn't have afforded to replace with new buildings. Late last month the council decided to vote unanimously to have the town hall saved all apart from one councillor. Councillor Jamie Goff was concerned about the costs escalating and other issues including asbestos and ground problems. So the worst possible thing that you could ever do in a decision making role is to not make a decision. So in the event that the full restoration option is passed, then I back the collective decision. I'm part of a governance group and when we make a decision, whatever the outcome of that is, I own. You know how I feel about it, I've been upfront and honest with you about my concerns with it, but I won't pick holes in it. 
uh, and it's my job to ensure that we make the best go of it that we can. However, he chose to back the other councillors despite his concerns. And they'll be hoping to get the same turnout when it reopens again to the public in 2018. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. Progress at last. We're still to come here on CTV News, a book to help anxious children following the earthquakes. Welcome back to Christchurch. Mothers are doing it for themselves and decided to put pen to paper to help children suffering anxiety since the earthquakes. The pair have created a worry bug, a pesky little fella who teaches kids to squash their worries away. Chelsea Daniels explains. A unique new teaching resource has been launched in Christchurch today to help support children with anxiety following the earthquakes. The Worry Bug project consists of two books, one for the classroom and the other to be taken home by Canterbury students next term. The lovely thing about this is that here's um, two women uh, who have decided that they want to do something about it and having never written a book before, <laughs> they've decided to write two. They've gone to uh, amazing Christchurch Illustrator, um, gotten it done, the Community Trust has come on board to fund it, so suddenly 23,000 copies of one of these books goes straight out to kids. Authors Serena and Julie both work closely with children and being mothers themselves decided to create something fresh to address the issue. The inspiration for, for the book really came from personal experience and battling with anxiety in our own family and in the families that, of the people that lived around us and in our school community and it just felt like it was everywhere, it became such a focus. The books opt for a collaborative effort from teachers and parents, as opposed to leaving the child to work out their worries for themselves. There are still a lot of people on the ground in Canterbury working really hard for our kids, so it's not that there weren't, but I think this has got a difference in that it's about families and classrooms and that synergy of working together, like Serena said, it's not just focused on individual children. Research from the All Right campaign earlier this year shows that nearly a third of Canterbury parents agreed that their children were too anxious or clingy. But Julie says the earthquakes haven't necessarily affected our kids for the worse. They're building resilience because of the, what they're being through. What they've been through. They're not just experiencing anxiety. They're, they're going to grow into these great adults who know to man, how to manage serious situations. Deputy Mayor Vicky Buck is supportive of the project and says it's an exciting time for Cantabrian children. I think actually it's lovely that people have presented the fact that people are worried, kids are worried, um, and that they've presented in a way that makes it very understandable and um, sort of speaks to, to the fact that actually a whole lot of people are worried and it's OK, but there are things that you can do about that as well. A total of 23,000 copies of Mayor and the Worry Bug will be given at no cost, thanks to the support of the Canterbury Community Trust. We felt this was quite a revolutionary way of dealing with this issue and represented a different way of thinking, so we wanted to be part of making that happen. Illustrated by award-winning artist and Christchurch local Jenny Cooper, the book focuses on how important family involvement is when addressing these issues in a child's life. It's been lovely to build a relationship with her and actually we, like, she's just had to go but it was, she, she was just said, you know, call me for the next one. So she's really exciting, she's really backed it and when Karen was reading it before she had tears in her eyes and it was so beautiful to have been part of something with someone who was able to invest themselves emotionally, understand the story, understand us, love kids and just made it a perfect, yeah. a perfect marriage really. The book can be purchased online for Canterbury children to enjoy for years to come. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. The Ministry for Primary Industries believes the exporting of livestock from Timaru to Mexico was done correctly. This despite a large amount of animal deaths on board the ship. The vessel left for the country just last month. A large shipment of livestock travelling from Timaru to Mexico has been sparked with controversy since it left the Canterbury town last month. Nearly 50,000 sheep and 3,000 cattle were transported from the South Canterbury port, but not all of them made the journey to the Mexican shores. An animal advocacy group says they're appalled nearly 450 combined sheep and cattle died on the journey to their new country in North America. 
SAFE's Executive Director Hans Krieg says the lives of the animals that died on board and in preparation to board the ship matter and the group are wanting answers. However, in a statement to CTV News, the Ministry for Primary Industries says there were 191 sheep mortalities on the voyage and 252 mortalities at the Timaru feedlot prior to the vessel leaving, with details provided from Assure Quality on behalf of the Ministry. They go on to say, the reason the animals died before departure was primarily due to adverse weather conditions in the Timaru region when the sheep were assembled at the feedlot. And the Ministry says they are confident the animals on board were fit for export. However, SAFE is urging the government to ban the shipment of live exports of animals altogether. A new principal has been appointed for Aranui High School. Uh, Andy Kai Fong has accepted the role at the campus, which is set to open in 2017 and will replace Aranui Wainoni and Avondale Primary Schools and, of course, Aranui High School. The Board of Trustees says the former Hornby High School principal was appointed after a rigorous selection process. In 2017, the communities of East and Christchurch will have a state-of-the-art, newly built campus on the current Aranui High School site. It was a, one of the most popular movies when it was released back in the mid-2000s and the Canterbury Museum has now celebrated its second night at the movie event since the earthquakes. Jared McCulloch went along. Ever wondered what happens at the museum when the lights are out? <laughs> well, it may not be as extreme as this hit Hollywood film, but one of Canterbury's most popular attractions throughout the day is now open at night with the lights out and open to explore. Canterbury Museum have been doing the Night at the Museum events for the last 11 years, loosely based on the Hollywood blockbuster movie of the same name. This year's theme evolved around the creepy crawlies linked to one of the museum's latest displays and one of the organisers says a lot of work has gone in behind the scenes to make it happen. Well, it's a greater team effort, really, and I think that's a great thing. So about six months out, we have several groups within the museum. So we have our comms team, we have our public programs team, and then we have our exhibitions team. So we all put our ideas together on the table, come up with all sorts of bizarre ideas. <laughs> the young Cantabs are asked to dress up in their favourite insect costume and take a tour around the displays in their pitch black rooms. And I also made an effort with this groovy headset. But besides the dress up and getting lost in the museum, the idea is to find as many creepy insects as possible. And Marissa says she's hoping for a large crowd. Over 7,000 people over the four nights, so it was incredible, it was really well done. I think that was the first time we had run Night at the Museum post-quake, so it was good to see people in the community coming back out again. And the idea around this year's theme came from their own exhibit on display. We called it Creepy Crawly because we were basing it around our spiders exhibition, Punga Weri Weri, Spiders Up Close. So that was a good, good way of linking it in. There were some interesting objects on display, snakes hanging off the statues, cars and animals with the crazy eyes, but wait for it. It's not just the googly eyes and spiders or even this in my head that's popular, it's actually something that's on the floor. I'd have to say the grossest part first <laughs> might be the little parcel of goodies that the dinosaur left behind, <laughs> swarming with flies. But what you may not have heard, um, that I heard this afternoon when it was all nice and quiet, the buzzing, swarming bee flies around, around that nice little parcel of poo. <laughs> but she says more importantly it's a place to learn about Canterbury's history in a new and creative way. We're very much a discovery place and I think a place of learning, a place of real stories and I think that's what part of the museum, Night at the Museum is about, about getting people to come, yeah, explore the museum. It's very much a team effort with many taking the time to volunteer their commitments to help out. I really enjoy reading to little kids. Um, I just really like giving the power of story out to everyone and it's the seeing the joy in their faces is really nice. But Marissa says it's not just for the young families. We do find that the grandparents come along as well, so it's not just about the young families. The teenagers come, they want to be part of it as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's really interesting. People don't want to miss out. And there was a positive vibe from the explorers as well. I think it's good for the kids to come in the dark and run around and have a good look at things just the way they are. Really, really good that it's put on and you know, entertaining and fun. It's great, yeah, yeah, we love it. We do it every kids' fest, yeah. The next event is scheduled for Thursday night at the museum. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. 
And sort of come here on CTV News, more climate change fears for Canterbury and the all-important weather forecast. Welcome back to CTV News. Will your home or your business be affected by the Council's Coastal Hazards Report? Well, information meetings will kick off tomorrow for residents affected by the future impacts of climate change, with the Council setting up important meetings to explain more on the issue. Public sessions will be held at a number of different locations throughout July, informing residents of the risks of climate change around the city. Last week, the Christchurch City Council were presented with Stage 3 of the Coastal Hazards Assessment Report, outlining areas at risk to beach line erosion over the next 50 to 100 years. The council was following suit with other low-lying towns and cities across the country to put together a plan to take the growing problem of sea levels rising and to protect against tsunamis. The erosion and inundation zone have been made clear to councillors, giving an idea of the impact of climate change and the everlasting effects to follow. Eastern Christchurch and Sumner are one of two areas most at risk to rising sea levels, as well as Littleton, Banks Peninsula and Akaroa. The council are holding the first meeting tomorrow at the Eastgate Shopping Centre from 1 to 2 p.m. and again at 6 to 7 p.m. Other meetings will be held at South Brighton Community Centre next Wednesday night and North New Brighton on the following Thursday. All other meetings for Sumner, Diamond Harbour and Akaroa are on the Council's website. All right, Mercy standing by with the all-important weather forecast. Here at Canterbury, well a lot of people have been talking and asking about snow over the past couple of days. We even saw, some of us anyway, a light white sprinkling on the ground this morning. But let's take a look at today's highs. Twice Lawn for Waimate and Timaru, 8 degrees for both of you. Heading to central Canterbury, sleety showers for a lot of places today. Even a little bit of snow in eastern Christchurch, 7 degrees for everyone here. Darfield and Methven, just 6 degrees for you today, chilly across the board. Looking further north, Kaikoura and Cheviot on 7 with the Sleety showers again. Amberley and Rangiora, a bit warm on 8 degrees. Hamlet Springs, just 4 degrees for you today. Taking a look over to the Alpine region, Lake Tikapo, 4 degrees for you as well. Let's take a look at tomorrow's weather for the major centres. Timaru, a very cold day in store for tomorrow's weather. Southerlies coming through and sleety showers tomorrow evening. Flipping over to Ashburton, a very similar picture here with these southerlies coming through and sleety showers for you as well. 6 degrees is your high. Over to Christchurch, chance snow for tomorrow morning for Christchurch. Cold indeed with 6 for your high tomorrow as well. And now over to Kaikoura. Again, we're seeing these southwesterlies really coming through. We need to wrap up warm as these sleety showers will be here. Looking to tomorrow's weather for the other areas, again, we're seeing cold and chilly temperatures across the board here, 5 degrees for Twizel and those southerlies coming through. Central Canterbury, potential snow flurries for Darfield and Methven, 4 degrees for both of you, 6 degrees for Leeston and Akaroa and those sleety showers coming through here. Looking further north, Hammer Springs, you're taking out the region's low tomorrow on just 2 degrees, snow flurries predicted for you as well, Oxford too down there with a little bit of snow and as we head further over to the Alpines, just three degrees for everyone here, a little bit of snow for Arthur's Pass. Let's take a look at the upcoming days. It is looking a little bit better for Friday. We're seeing these southwesterlies easing a little bit, maybe a little bit warmer, and that rain should be clearing in the afternoon. Looking over to Saturday's temperatures and weather now, the sun is going to be out, however we shouldn't be fooled as we should take note of these minuses here, could be very frosty. Looking at other areas, we're seeing across the board these southwesterlies are supposed to be easing for Friday, which is good. The rain coming through for some patches though and maybe some snow flurries still for the north. As we head over to Saturday, the sun is coming out. However, as I said before, those frosts could be heavy, so we need to watch out for black ice on the roads. As we can see over the next coming days, it's going to be really cold and chilly, much like today, and the snow and the sleet may be there for some places. If you do see snow at your place and you want to show us, then feel free to take a picture and send it in to news at ctv.co.nz. Thank you, Mercy, for the cold weather report. And that is CTV News for Wednesday. Stay warm and have a good night.
supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.